Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, day four now officially in the books, live from Phoenix, Arizona. Radio Row been here all week long preparing for Super Bowl 57, and we're gearing up for the final day here in Phoenix. What's the latest with Derek Carr and the Saints? Plus, you hear from Hall of Famer Tim Brown and NFL Network's Steve Weiss. It's all coming up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, February 10th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. You ought to win as a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raider Podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider Podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. My man Ari's making sure we're up on YouTube each and every day, even every day that we're here out in uh, Arizona for Super Bowl 57. He keeps hitting me up. Q. When you send it over, when you send it over, we got to get this up. Let's go, let's go. The people want it up on YouTube. All right, man. All right, I got you. Here it comes. So uh, at Ari Produces on Twitter, you can check him out. Definitely appreciate his efforts. And today's edition is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And man, it's been a long week here in Arizona. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm ready to go home. Blessed to be here, but I'm ready to go home. As soon as the shows are over uh, later on this afternoon, I guess this evening, whatever you want to call it, we're tearing everything down. You'll hear the zzz, 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 ding, 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 ding. You'll hear all that, and then boom, take all the equipment, put it in the back of the car, and hit the highway and be on the first thing smoking back to Las Vegas. Again, very blessed to be here. Don't want to make it sound like I, I'm complaining, but man, oh man, it's just something about being in your own bed and at your own house and not having to go out to eat. And That is one thing I will quickly complain about. Man, I have not found a great restaurant yet, <laughs> right? I've <laughs> tried multiple times to go get something really good to eat. And, well, I paid a really good price but didn't really get a really good product. So, you know, that's the one, I guess, the one downfall, I'll say. And I know next year when the Super Bowl is in Las Vegas, that will not be the case. Very excited about uh, the Super Bowl coming next year and the fact that, well, we'll be able to be home and cover the Super Bowl at the same time. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And that, honestly, is something – Everybody is talking about on Radio Row. They, they're they talking about the game. They're talking about being in Phoenix. They're talking about this, that, and the other. But, man, every conversation to a T is, hey, we'll be in your 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 backyard next next year. Can't wait to get to your yard. Q, we're going to come stay at your house. I mean, this, it's it's all, it's, man, that's all the conversation is about Las Vegas in 2024. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely looking forward to that. But, there's still business that's being taken care of, right? And a lot of the business when it comes to the silver and black have to do with Derek Carr. That's another hot topic on Right Hill Row all week long. It's been Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, Las Vegas in 2024, and let's see, what else is another hot topic? Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much what it's been all uh, all all week long here on Radio Row. But uh, Derek Carr visited with the Saints for a second day in a row. He visited with them on Wednesday, visited with them on Thursday. And Tom Pelissero, who I'm actually going to talk to this morning, so depending on what time you're actually listening to this podcast, uh, I may be talking to Tom Pelissero from the NFL Network or – um, I already talked to him, but uh, yeah, he tweeted out that the Saints and Raiders already have the framework of a Derek Carr trade in place, a condition for Ra the Raiders to let the visit happen. But Carr's no trade clause means he controls whether any trade happens before 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. So make sure to stay tuned. So here was Ian Rappaport as he's another guy that's been at Radio Row all week long. He was checking in on NFL Network talking about the Derek Carr situation and the visit with the Saints. That visit is still going. It is day two for the Derek Carr visit to the New Orleans Saints and there is a little bit of urgency here. Of course we know that Derek Carr's contract becomes fully guaranteed, triggers the third day after the Super Bowl. So at some point there needs to be some point soon there needs to be some sort of resolution. But not any time today. I would not expect any sort of deal or trade today, but Derek Carr really soaking it in in New Orleans, went to dinner with New Orleans Brass along with head coach Dennis Allen last night. It was no doubt a tasty Bayou-type meal. I'm a little jealous of that, i got to be completely honest. Back in the building today for a little bit of wooing 
So here is where it stands. The Saints are considered to be the front runner for Derek Carr to get permission to speak with him. They needed to not come to terms on a trade, but show the Raiders that they are at least going to be in the ballpark. We'll see if the two sides can work it out and if Carr gives the okay, but at least a significant step today. So I don't know. Gut feeling just tells me that something's going to crack sooner rather than later. And what I mean by that is I mean sometime today or it's either going to happen over the weekend, but of course it's not going to happen on Sunday, right? I mean, Sunday's the Super Bowl, so they won't uh, make any kind of announcement or, or let anything leak about it on Sunday, possibly on Saturday. Uh, but I, I don't think if you hear don't hear anything today, then you'll probably hear something as soon as Monday. So maybe on Monday's show, we'll be talking about uh, the Raiders and the Saints have come to an agreement. It just, to me, feels like that it's bound to happen. The only thing is, is what's the conversation going to be? You know, we had a lot of conversations on Radio Row on Thursday. Myself and Damon were talking about it and talking about what, you know, what's a realistic conversation. And I looked at what the Saints have as far as draft picks. They have two fifth round picks. I think that they'll give up one of those fifth round picks for Derek. I don't see them giving up more than the fifth round pick, but DeMond made a really good argument for why they might have to. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, I, I don't I don't expect him to, to give up a lot. Some don't think that they'll give up anything at all. They'll just wait for him to get released, which is what I've been saying for the longest, is that that's most likely what's going to happen. But uh, if they do, in fact, decide to make a trade, I, this is just me, and doesn't mean that I'm right, I expect it to be a late round pick. But we'll see. That'll be interesting because, of course, the Raiders have a lot of work to do to try to build this team to be where they want it to be in 2023. So that's the latest and the greatest as of right now when it comes to Derek Carr. Also on Thursday in uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, the NFL honors the award, all the awards were given out. And, of course, uh, the Raiders knew that they had one award winner in Josh Jacobs. He won the, the FedEx Ground Player of the Year. He actually was walking around with the, the trophy on Radio Row on on Thursday, and I was trying to catch up with him and talk with him, but by the time he did a couple different hits here and there, including with the Raiders.com, uh, their their site, uh, he, he basically had to go. So maybe I'll be able to catch up with him later on today. Uh, Josh is always very, very, um, you know, willing to give his time to talk to us, so I definitely appreciate that. But he was the winner of the FedEx Ground Player of the Year, and then the league's leading rusher, we all knew he was the league's leading rusher. They have changed the award to the Jim Brown Award. The, the, the NFL announced to permanently honor the impact of Jim Brown of the, on the NFL. The player with the most rushing yards each season will be presented with the Jim Brown Award. Uh, that's something that was announced during the NFL Honors, the league's primetime award show. And as a matter of fact, Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders, two gold jackets, two bangers, two Hall of Famers, uh, announced Josh Jacobs as the first winner of the Jim Brown Award. The NFL has decided to rename the award given to the lead leading rusher. And Barry and I are honored that that award will be given out tonight in the honor of Jim Brown. No question about it. No question. Now, please give it up for the first Jim Brown Award winner, Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. So there you go, two Hall of Famers announcing Josh Jacobs and just another another little uh, accolade to add to the resume, right? And, of course, we all knew that that was going to be the award that he received uh, because he was the league's leading rusher. But to see that it's been called the Jim Brown Award now, it's going to be permanently named the Jim Brown Award. I think that's really cool. Josh Jacobs is the very first winner of the Jim Brown Award. Uh, there was other awards given out. Comeback Player of the Year, MVP. Patrick Mahomes won that. Comeback Player of the Year was Geno Smith. There was a lot of different uh, awards. The Walter Payton Man of the Year, I think that that's a big, big deal. Dak Prescott won that one. But the Hall of Fame class in 2023 was also announced. And for the Raiders, they've had representation the last two years. They had Tom Flores and Charles Woodson uh, a couple years ago. And then this past year, they had Cliff Branch going into the Hall of Fame, and uh, that was really cool to be able to be in Canton, Ohio for that. They did not have any representation for the Hall of Fame class in 2023, but this is what it is. Rondé Barber, a guy that I believe we're going to talk to on Radio Row sometime today. Uh, Darrell Rivas, definitely deserving. Joe Thomas, definitely deserving. I still remember where he was when he got drafted. That was the same year that Jamarcus Russell was drafted. Joe Thomas, he's, uh, what, fishing with his pops? <laughs> He's not even at the draft. He's like, I'm going fishing with my pops. But Joe Thomas was fantastic for the Browns. Zach Thomas also going into the hall to Marcus Ware. Don Coriel, coach and contributor. Chuck Howley, a senior. Joe Klecko, a senior. And Ken Riley, a senior. So that's the 2023 Pro Football 
Hall of Fame class. That's all I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast news and notes of the day. Coming up in segment number two, I had an opportunity to catch up with a Hall of Famer, a banger, a gold jacket. That's touchdown Tim Brown. You'll hear that conversation coming up in segment number two after I tell you about a couple great sponsors of the Locked On Raider podcast, including Blue Nile and First and foremost, you know Valentine's Day is coming up. That means romance is in the air more than usual, right? So I don't need to tell all the lovebirds out there what's going on. You probably have had your date planned on the calendar for weeks, but have you found that perfect Valentine's Day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at Blue Nile. Dot com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. There are simple online tools that you choose a diamond-shaped size and clarity as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft that perfect piece to your specifications. Blue Nile provides expert guidance in depth, educational materials, and unique online tools that place you in control so you can forget the usual hassles of jewelry shopping process and focus on the romance. Blue Nile's diamond price guarantees allow you to compare to competitors' diamonds against one of theirs. Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free, and so are returns. Right now, you save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to 50% off. BlueNile.com. Check them out today. I also want to tell you about the title sponsor of today's show, which is FanDuel. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner. They're the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download the FanDuel. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe and secure and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Wanted to get into a really good conversation I was able to have on Thursday on Radio Row with Touchdown Tim Brown. It's always a blessing to catch up with Tim Brown. And I tell you, every single year I'm on Radio Row, I have another opportunity to, to catch up with Tim. And uh, just like Josh Jacobs, he's always willing to give extra time. He actually uh, was leaving Radio Row and and basically made a beeline back across the, the room to actually sit down for about 10 minutes with me. And I thought that that was really cool. Uh, the, my guys that I was working with, they uh, they hustled up and went over there and got him and said, hey, uh, you know, Q wants to talk to you real quick. Radio Nation Radio wants to talk to you. And he was awesome all about it. So he came over and gave us a few minutes of his time. Here's that conversation. Back here on Radio Row, Phoenix Convention Center. It's Unnecessary Roughness, Radio Nation Radio 920. Right now with the Hall of Famer, Tim Brown. Good to see you. Yeah, it's Thursday. It's a busy day. It's a busy, <laughs> it's a busy day. day. You yeah. had to keep your head on a swivel around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably the big day of the week. And then tomorrow, People, oh, yeah, I forgot to hit that one. There's going to be a little uh, one or two hits and get out of here. Well, you're, you're here for the Perfect Ten presented by Prudential. Tell us about that. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, we uh, when I was getting ready to go into the Hall of Fame, uh, I had a buddy to come up to me and tell me that I was only the ninth guy to win the Heisman being the Hall of Fame, and I was blown away by that. Right. Thinking, no way. Yeah. You know, it's 40, 50 guys have done that, you mm-hmm. know, and I was shocked to find out that, that was the, that was the truth, you know, and and I think you know initially, you know, after saying wow, you know, the thought process went to man, what an incredible legacy we're leaving on the football field. Can we do something off the football field? Right. You know, can we get together, mm-hmm. band together as brothers who have accomplished this this incredible feat? More men have walked on the moon right. than have accomplished this feat. Can we get together and make something of this? And um, you know, it's not easy when you have uh, Roger Staubach in his late seventies at the time, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Charles Woodson in his late thirties at the time, right. or whatever. You know, trying to trying to get all these guys on the same page, man. And uh, but everybody saw the vision right away. It's a heck of a fraternity. I mean, yeah. you're already in the Hall of Fame, which yeah. is a very elite club, and this yeah. is even more of yeah. the elite yeah. club, yeah. right? And, I mean, and, that's incredible. And it's not that you're trying to separate yourself, but really, you're trying to say, look. We did something that was sustained, you know, right. longevity, sustained excellence, or whatever you want to say, and and um, 
and we want companies with with that kind of background. So we're very happy that Prudential, you know, has, yeah. has stepped up. Fox has stepped up. You know, NFL Films stepped up. Right. Hall of Fame Village stepped up. You know, and and we believe that this film that's coming out on Saturday Saturday night will be the beginning of us being able to uh, attract other you know right. uh, big time companies. So we can go out and, and, and you know, help help in the community. You know, yesterday we did, uh, one of our partners is Red Cross. Okay. You know, you're going to give back. Nobody better than Red Cross to give it back. Right, you know? right, so, right. Um, so, you know, but I found out yesterday that in our community, we don't give blood mm-hmm. that often. Right, right, yeah. And guess what? We need the blood more than anybody. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. We ain't giving it. No, that's a good so point. So that's one of the things that we want to do. We want to get in those communities and, and try and find out how can we help you know, encourage the people in the community to give blood. You know? Right. And, and the game has done so much for you. So to be able to do that, right, yeah. and give back. I mean, do you ever just kind of sit back and think what exactly, like I said, the game has done for you and, and where it's got you in education, went to Notre Dame, right. I mean, the NFL. I mean, I mean, just everything. It's that, just That's why we're doing what we're doing now. Right. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's very easy to sit back and go, hey, bring me the riches. And yeah. I'll just – but to actually get out there and put your feet on the ground, man, and um, try and make something happen – um, it, it's, it's, it's work, but at the same time, I've been given all this, right. you know, I've been blessed with all these, with, with, with the talent God has given me. Yeah. My football talents are over, but now I still have a name enough mm-hmm. to be able to, and now this, you know, now I'm partnering with guys with bigger names, you right. know, whatever you want to say, uh, it puts you in a position where, you know, you can keep this thing going, sustaining it. Um, just like we were talking about with our, with Heisman, you know, yeah. now we're trying to sustain it more, you right. know, and um, and just have a legacy, man, where you you are able to give back and um, and and help people who are maybe I hate using that less fortunate, yeah, yeah, people who need help. You know, right. I mean, there are people out right. there who need need help. Right, no doubt about it. Again, we're with the Hall of Famer Tim Brown here on Radio Row, Unnecessary Roughness, Radio Nation Radio 920. So I want to ask, man, the, the off season's going to be a busy one for the Silver oh, and Black. God. <laughs> you tell, explain to the people what's happening to me right now when you said <laughs> he's that. Just, right? He's just <laughs> melted <laughs> in his seat. He's sitting back. He's melted in his seat. It's a, it's Look, a busy man, off season. It's, um, yeah, yeah. It, and it got busier because of this thing that's going on with Carr. Yeah. If Carr doesn't agree – they're 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 going to be in some issue have have a real big issue. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you pay a man forty million dollars and and don't let him play on your team? You right. I mean, right. So do you bring him back? They would have to release him, right? I mean, if they but, can't figure something out by the February fifteenth date. I I would think they just have to flat out release him. Which when's the last time a Pro Bowl quarterback was released? I mean, but <laughs> if they release him, then. Do they still have to pay him? No. No, they, they have until that February 15th date. To make a decision. Yeah, they have to they make want. that decision. But so, you know the new league year doesn't start till March 15th. So, yeah, yeah. So so now if they release him now, they don't get anything for it. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, look, hey, man, what your mama say back in the day? Boy, you make your bed, you go lie in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. I mean, that's just what's going on. But, uh, look, you know, I, I've been telling everybody, man, and, you know, people have been laughing about it, but I'm dead serious. Uh I just want my Sunday after, Sunday afternoons back, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to be able to relax, right, right. watch a game, right. and not throw stuff at the at the TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that wasn't the case this year for no. sure. No, and the Raider and, Nation uh, feels that same way. Yeah, I, I know, know they do. They have to because they know the game. Right. You know, these are not guys who are just ch- chiming in on, on Sunday afternoon. They, they're they watching what's going on all week, you know? So, look, I um, – man, look, that's all. I, I'm, I'm not saying we should win 13 games. I don't care if we win seven games. I just want to see great football. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, I want to see the team win. But, man, you know, to see the team moving in, in the right direction is is really, really important. So, we'll see what happens. Well, I, before I let you go, great football you did see from uh, Devontae Adams, someone that yeah. you know very well, yeah. first year with the silver and black, breaking records of yours. Yeah. And you yeah. said it. You said it. You were on the show with us and said, hey, he's going to break my records. What do you think of what I Devontae mean, did? I just asked he'd be kind when he go by him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, uh, it, it should it it you know it should have been as close as it was. You right. know, I mean, he should have broke you know, but there were a little that was a little low in the, in the middle of the year for him too. But um, if if I'm this organization mm-hmm. and I'm trying to build around him, then I'm, I'm trying to make sure that he's on the same page with with what's going on. Right. Because if he starts to talk in a bad way, negative way, this organization is going to plummet. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he would. Don't think I don't know him well enough to be able to say he he is or he wouldn't. Right. But um, but I, I'm just saying, if that's even a possibility, 
I think this organization has to make sure that he understands what's going on because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I would give up a career with Aaron Rodgers to come play with Derek Carr and then Derek Carr be gone. Right. Uh, that would that would be mind boggling yeah, to me. Yeah. How did I put myself in this position? Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So and it's not that he would even blame the Raiders. He may be even blaming himself for putting himself in a position. You know right. what I mean? And um, so, look, um, a lot going on, bro. Yeah. I mean, way too much going on that should be going on. You know, we should be talking about who the first-round pick is going to be. Right. You know, but we, we got way bigger issues than that yeah. uh, going on. So, um, look, I, I, I am I – am, eternally hopeful that that they would get this figured out because yeah. look i wish people didn't call me when the raiders lose i wish <laughs> my twitter didn't blow up right? when the Ra i really both, did and i, I know mean, you're I mean, way you know, higher than me <laughs> but you know it it's not going to happen anytime soon right you know right I mean? yeah you know and that's why when i speak i try not to be contradictory of what's going on with the organization especially during the season because i don't want people to say tim brown is whatever whatever, whatever. right but if I do say something, I mean it. Yeah. And I, I try and speak from a truth point of view, too, and not what right. I think. Right. This is what I saw. And this is, you know what I mean? That's where I try and speak from because I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to affect what's going on there because that is not the case. Final question for you. What about Aaron Rodgers? I mean, he, he, he's, he has magic with Devontae. You think they need to make a move for him? I mean, if it's – I don't know if they have any picks to get it done. You know, I right. mean – It's going to take a lot. They gave him two already. Right, right, right. They got a good relationship with Green Bay right now. <laughs> right, right, right. If I'm Green Bay, I'm like, come on. Right. Let me know what you're talking about. Right. You know, but, but at the same time, Aaron can probably force something if mm -hmm. he wanted to that, uh, that you know – and I think that would probably be what would happen. He would probably force them to do something they didn't want to do. But, right. um, you know, uh, pretty interesting, man. You know, um, you know what we went through back in the day is boring. Yeah. <laughs> we look at look at all this stuff that's happening. But uh, I hope that, again, that they can get this thing figured out, get their quarterback in, settle that part of it. Now let's go get the you know the defensive yeah, players. Yeah. Let's go you know, and let's build this thing the way uh, way we should get it built. The perfect ten presented by Prudential. Let everybody know about it one more time. Yes, sir. Saturday night, eight p.m. on Fox, uh, eight p.m. Eastern on Fox. So it should be great. There Looking it is. Forward to it. The Hall of Famer Tim Brown. Thank you so much. Thank for you, your brother. Time. Appreciate you, man. Always appreciate Absolutely. you. So there you go. Good stuff right there. It's always good stuff, and the conversation is never the same when it comes to touchdown Tim Brown. And uh, love the love the conversation when I started talking about the Raiders off season. And he just started melting. He literally started melting in his chair it was hilarious but uh tim brown is is great to catch up with man real good dude uh and I, like i said always appreciate every opportunity i get to talk to him coming up in segment number three steve weiss from the nfl network another guy that i had an opportunity to catch up with he talked all things nfl talked about the the super bowl going on on sunday talked about the raiders off season the quarterback position talked a lot man a lot of good stuff steve weiss is one of those that when he talks I like to listen. So you'll hear that conversation coming up in segment number three after I tell you about TurboTax. Go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with the expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and follow you for you so you do not do your taxes. Show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste, not taxes. Sing, not taxes. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride, not taxes into the sunset. With TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish, ensuring your taxes are done right and it's guaranteed so you can relax. Feel good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit, visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Intuit TurboTax, full service products only, video meeting while expert does your taxes is required. See guaranteed details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Closing out the show, closing out the week. Phoenix, Arizona, Radio Rose, where we've been all week long. And as soon as today's shows are over, going to be right there on the first thing smoking to head back to Las Vegas, about a four and a half, maybe five-hour drive, but it's all good. Be back in uh, in the home, be back at home, and uh, be able to watch the Super Bowl with big Super Bowl party going on on Sunday uh, in Las Vegas. So I'm excited about that. Going to take the family out to that. So looking forward to being back in, uh, in in the home and then on Monday being back in the home studios. But I uh, did want to share with the, you the conversation I had on Thursday with Steve Weiss from the NFL Network, talking all things NFL, talking Raiders, talking Hall of Fame honors, all that good stuff with the great 
Steve Weish. We're back here on Radio Row. This is Thursday, and I'm with NFL Network Steve Weish. And Steve, it's it's really starting to start to ramp up here today. You you can feel it. I mean, yes. Thursday is usually the day. That's when a lot of folks start coming into town on the Super right. Bowl site. But the energy is here, right? And, and this is what you want. You want it to kind of build up, right? And then peak on Sunday. But for what we do and everything, all right, let's go. Let, yeah. Let, let, let's make it happen. Right. Let's really push. We've been talking about this game for 10 days now. Yeah. Now let's push the final X's and O's and, and see what's going to happen. But as you know, the Super Bowl is not just a game, man. It's an no, event. It's, it's an next event, level. Yeah, it's an event. Which is, yep. Look how the people here on Radio Row. It hasn't right. been like this for the past two or three years, so that's a cool part of stuff, too. How? Yeah, let's get to that. How, how nice is that to see it starting to get back to normal again? It's been it's been a while, but it's starting to get ramped up again. It, it, it's great because, you know, look, as a, as a country, as a world, right. we haven't been back to normal for a couple of years, but to kind of see – all of our media brethren yeah. back here. Remember, it's not Radio Row anymore. It's Media right. Row. They had, they corrected me on that. They I was correct, calling it Radio it Row. Media they Row. said Media Row, Media Center. Because we have <laughs> podcasts. Yeah. We have we have original broadcasts right. as well as the radio stuff. So that's another element to us. You see all the big stages and sets. <laughs> right. I love it. The energy again. You see Gronk walking around here yeah. and, and guys acting up. You're feeling what you're supposed to feel right now. Well, I know a lot of people are excited because uh, Rihanna's going to be on the third floor yeah. in a little while, and so that's going to be a showstopper. It's, it kind of reminds me of when uh, Beyonce was performing in New Orleans, and all of a sudden we were all doing interviews, and then they're like, oh, no, here's Beyonce, and it just stopped. Yeah, like later. We'll, we'll, we'll Deion Sanders is like, I'm out. I got to go see yeah. Be- <laughs> Beyonce. Yeah, we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> right. So that's how it's going to be when Rihanna, uh, when she hits the, well, not the stage, but when she hits the third floor a little bit later on this afternoon. So for this game, um, we always talk about games are one in the trenches. I feel like yeah. this is the ultimate game's going to be one in the trenches. It, it really is, you know, and you look at the Eagles on both lines. And let's start with the offensive line. Talking to coaches who've played against them, they're like the best line in the NFL. And it all starts with Jason Kelsey. Right. You know, as great as Lane Johnson is, so it starts with Kelsey. The athleticism, the strength, the way he's still playing. Right. I mean, you look at some of the stuff, the games they run with him as a center, pulling and just looping. It, it, it is amazing the way he handles it. And then on the defensive front, you know, as good as they are talent-wise, right. they dress 10 guys. Most teams only dress 10 defensive linemen, so they roll depth in. Right. That's why guys like Indomit and Sue, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, it's not just Hassan Reddick. Right. And Javon Hargrave, their nose tackle is the real is the straw that stirs the drink there. So yeah. they're really good, but don't discount the Chiefs. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. We, we know their tackles are probably vulnerable to speed rush. Mm-hmm. That's you're going to see Andy Reid do some screens, do some things to get right. underneath that. So the play calling could offset some of the Eagles' strengths, and that's why this is going to be such a good game. Right. On paper, it looks like the Eagles up front. But you just never know how Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo are going to offset things. I'm excited for it. It's yeah. really one of the better, I think, Super Bowls that we're going to see in a while. I mean, this one's fantastic. Let's hope I'm, so. I'm, I'm, yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Let's at least hope that's, so. That's what it looks like, at least on paper right now. But, Steve, you covered uh, the Raiders a lot this season. Yep. Uh, you were at Allegiant Stadium quite a bit. You saw a lot of their games. They've got a busy offseason. Yeah. they got a big offseason. How, how big is this for the Raiders? What do you think they – well, they need to start, obviously, with the quarterback. But yeah. how do you build this this team up in the offseason where they're all of a sudden competitive again in a very competitive AFC West. Well, I mean, again, like you said, you start with a quarterback. Yeah. Are you going to draft one and build? Right. Um, which it seems like it it might be the smart play when you look at the rest of the division. Or are you going to go the veteran free agent? Right. Probably in some some form of both. Yeah. Um, but you can't have a competitive team in this division if you don't fix that defense. Right. Right. At all three levels, mm-hmm. they have got to get better. Right. And they know that. So I think you're going to see a heavy emphasis in free agency in the draft on the defensive side. Yeah. They've got some players they can still work with on offense, plenty of them. Um, but you, you've got to get – you've got Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, but you've got to get an interior. Linebacking play has got to get better. And, of right. course, on the back end, that was a big concern and issue last year. That's got to be shored up. So they've – you know, when you hear BPA yeah. in the draft, best yeah, player best available, player available yeah. it's, it's actually going to mean something for the Raiders. Well, you know, and, and using the Eagles for an example, I mean, they have, what, 10 out of 11 of their starters were drafted guys. Yeah. So it can be done. Sure. And it can be done pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, look, not everyone has to take the Rams approach or the Bucks right. approach where right. F them picks. Yeah. We're going to go out and get some veteran players. Yeah. It can be you build it, you re-sign your own guys that you develop mm-hmm. in your image. Right. And you make it happen. Look, the Raiders did it that way when they were pushing for the playoffs a couple years ago. When they had Derek, when they had Khalil, when they had Amari Cooper, right. they decided to change directions, and it didn't work, but they had built some homegrown talent. There's all kind of ways you can do that in the division. See the Chargers yeah. 
doing that, right? The Chiefs have done that. They went out free agency and helped their offensive line after the last Super Bowl. Yeah. But look, this year they draft, they've got six rookies starting for them. Mm-hmm. Are playing integral rotational roles, most of them on defense where they went heavy in the draft. Right. It can be done and you can work things quickly. How, how, how important is it to bring back Josh Jacobs? The, the, just the guy, he, how important he is to that locker room. I mean, let's not be crazy. <laughs> right. I mean, he's young. Yeah. He is productive. Right. Once they decided that he would be the focal point of their offense, that's when their offense started to function with right. the normal as he last year. Mm-hmm. So it's huge. Yeah. And if you try to say, well, we're not going to pay him or whatever, he is going to go shine someplace else. Mm-hmm. So you better replace him with somebody of that caliber who fits what you want to do. Otherwise, it's going to look like a bad move if you don't bring him back. Well, when you have guys like that, like uh, Josh Jacobs and Max Crosby, how important is that for the locker room to be able to see that, hey, if I go out there and do my work, they're going to reward us? Now, that's, that's the huge thing. Yeah. That is a huge, like, okay, if I go out, this is an organization that's going to value what I do. Right. And, and that's going to work. And that's why teams continue to succeed. That's why the Steelers, mm-hmm. you know, and some of these teams are continually there. We're going to draft our guys. We're going to develop our guys. We're going to reward our guys. If you let good talent go, yeah. and again, the Raiders have seen this with Khalil Mack, with Amari Cooper. Other right. guys are going to be like, well, what's up? Right, right, you know? right. Or you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's why. Up until last year, they drafted, like, in the top 10 for, like, 11 straight years right. because they would draft guys, develop them, and not resign them. What, what's right. the purpose what are you doing? That? What are you doing? You're paying other people to come in more right. money instead right. of signing your own guys you, you develop in your image. So I, I think, again, for the morale, yeah, that's a really huge thing. But, again, you have a coaching staff in their second year that's trying to figure out how they want to identify this team. So you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of turnover as well. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, I know uh, the the Hall of Fame honors are t- are this evening. Yep. I know I can't pry out of you who's gonna be a Hall of Famer, but just to be a part of this and, and to be able yeah. to, you know, just how exciting is it to know that it's another class that you're about to announce? Yeah. So I don't have a vote, but I am part of a lot of things as to where I I know who's in the class. Right. And it's absolutely amazing because, first off, those 48 or 49 voters have a very difficult job yeah, exactly. to, to see who's going in. And then you look at some of, the, like, the first ballot guys always, guys like a Joe Thomas. Right. Like, okay, whoever presents him to say Joe Thomas. Right, right. right. High but, and by. <laughs> right. But, it's, but it's, it's so rewarding because as players, and every one of them to a man will tell you, when you're playing, they're not playing to – get into the Hall of Fame, right. playing for their teammates, or playing to win championships, or they're playing to win a paycheck. Mm-hmm. But then in hindsight, when they realize that there are only 362 players, coaches, and contributors of the tens of thousands, right. like 30,000, who have played, coached, or contributed to this game yeah. on the NFL level, that's rare air. Yeah. So it really means a lot. And for me to have some little grain of sand of participation in that, it's everything to me. It's awesome. It is. Well, we, uh, we, we appreciate you. We always appreciate you and uh, all your knowledge, and uh, have fun with the Hall of Fame. All right. Thanks for having me on. Steve Weish, NFL Network, here with us. There it is right there, Raider Nation. Done deal record. Steve Weish from the NFL Network. It's always great to catch up with him. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed talking with Steve Weish. And uh, that's going to do it for today's show. It's going to do it for the week of podcasts. Of course, uh, there could be breaking news at any time. We could get some kind of announcement. Maybe we already got an announcement based off whatever time you're listening to this about an agreement between the Saints and Derek Carr. I don't know if any other teams are going to get involved in this Derek Carr sweepstakes, but we know that a decision's got to be made a couple days after the Super Bowl, which is on Sunday. So uh, something's going to happen fast. (laughs) If it doesn't happen today, if it doesn't happen this weekend, it's going to happen. It's going to happen one way or the other. Either he's going to get released, he's going to get traded, Something's going to give, and, uh, you know, we'll be here to be all over it and talk about it and talk about how it impacts the Raiders and what they do moving forward with their quarterback position because as soon as he's gone, that's going to leave a huge hole at that position. What will they do? We'll talk about some options that they could do. We'll do that on Monday's show. Raider Nation, have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully we have a great day here in uh, Arizona to close out the week. I'm sure we will. I'm looking forward to it. I know we're talking with Tom Pelissero. I'm hoping to talk to Rondé Barber. Uh, looking, Maybe I saw Alec Ingold. Maybe be able to catch up with him. I heard Mac Hollins is going to be around. Uh, maybe I'll be able to catch up with Josh Jacobs. I'm uh, going to go 
all in, right? Stones on the table. We're going to go all the way in today and close out the week really strong. So excited about that. Raider Nation will talk again on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.